Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our annual Title I Family Engagement Meeting. My name is Richard Willis, and I am the principal here at Isaac Lane Elementary School. I'm so happy that you have taken the time to join us. I hope this meeting is not a waste of your time, but one of great information as we go through what a Title I school is and what that means for Isaac Lane. Again, this is an annual meeting uh, that we have at the beginning of each year, one of two meetings. So we'll have a second meeting in the spring, look for information to come out for that meeting. So why are we having this meeting? Well, the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, you may have heard of it referred to in that terminology, um, requires that each Title I school hold an annual meeting of Title I families in order to inform you of your school's participation in Title I in order to explain the requirements of Title I and to explain your rights as parents and family members to be involved. This is what you'll learn from this presentation. What a Title I school is, what your rights are, what the funds are used for, how Isaac Lane used the funds, what a school improvement plan is or an SIP, what our school-wide goals are, what a parent and family engagement uh, policy is and how it is funded, what a school parent compact is, what curriculum we use, what test we take, how you can get involved and who you can contact for help. What is a Title I school? Well, in 1965, the Title I Act was passed under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. It is by far the largest federal assistant program of our, nature, our, of our nation's schools. Title I schools receive extra funding or uh, Title I dollars from the government to identify students experiencing academical, academic difficulties and provide assistance to help these students to purchase additional staff programs, materials, and or supplies, and also to conduct parent and family engagement meetings, trainings, events, and or activities. So what are your rights? As a parent, as a family member of a Title I student, you have the right to be involved in the decisions we make at the school and district level. You have a right to be provided with information on your schools, your child's level of achievement on tests in all the academic areas. You have the right to request and receive information on the qualifications of the people that are working with your child. And you can get this information from the Jackson Madison County Board of Education. You also have the right to be um, to request opportunities for regular meetings to help formulate suggestions and to participate as appropriate in the decisions about the education of your child. This school is required to respond in a, to any such suggestions as soon as practicably possible. So what can Title I funds be used for? They can help us um, make smaller class sizes. Um, we can hire additional teachers and paraprofessionals. We can hire additional um, fund, I'm sorry, additional training for school staff provide extra instruction in the way of before and after school programs or even tutoring after school or before school. Um, we can fund parent and family engagement activities or a variety of supplemental teaching materials, equipment, and technology. How do um, we use these funds? Well, this year we were awarded approximately $250,000 and that money goes towards additional staff. You can see those staff members on the screen. Uh, it goes towards programs, materials, and supplies. We've been heavy on securing great technology for our students. So um, a chunk of that money will go towards that. And then money goes towards teacher and administrator professional development. So what is the SIP? Well, the SIP is the school improvement plan and it includes the identification of the school planning team. This is a team of individuals made up of 
staff members and parent members, parent and community members that help us uh, plan. Um, it also identifies or includes a needs assessment and a summary of academic and non-academic data. So um, basically we look at the needs of this school, academic, emotionally, whatever, and we include it in this plan. We pri prioritize our goals, uh, make strategies and action steps to help address the academic and non-academic needs from the data that we've collected. Um, and then teacher, we um, put teacher and staff professional development needs in it in order to implement the goals that we prioritized. And also we uh, include budget and the coordination of resources in the plan. So the school must include family representatives and we have done that. If you like to be a part of this plan, planning committee, just let me know and we can add you to the team as well. So what are our school-wide program goals? We're focusing on three goals, literacy, math, and the social emotional needs of our students. So how is parent and family engagement funded? Any district with a Title I allocation exceeding 500,000 is required by law to set aside 1% of that Title I allocation for parent and family engagement. I'll let you read that second bullet. You as Title I parents and family members have the right to be involved in how this money is spent. This year we've uh, appropriated approximately $4,000 towards our family engagement funding and we'll use this money uh, for family engagement meetings and events throughout the school year. Um, events such as our literacy night, we had a fall carnival of learning in which uh, parents and students were able to come in and participate in fun games that uh, involved our curriculum. So you actually got a chance to see what your kids learn on a daily basis. Um, and that was uh, headed by our teachers. So you actually got a chance to interact with the teacher as they taught uh, specific uh, parts of our curriculum, just so you can get a feel of it. But we made it fun and we gave away games. That's just one example, we gave away gifts, I'm sorry. That's just one example of um, how we use those funds. We also use them to fund the printing of our compacts and innovative parent engagement plans, which you'll be receiving in a couple of weeks. You as a Title I parent or family member have the right to be involved in the development of these plans. What is a parent and family engagement policy? So, um, these plans address how the district and school will implement the parent and family engagement requirements of ESSA. The components should include how parents and families can be involved in decision-making and activities, how parent and family engagement funds are being used, how information and training will be provided to families, and how the school will build capacity in families and staff for strong parent and family engagement. You as a Title I parent or family member have the right to be involved in the development of these plans. The district's parent and family engagement policy can be found on our website, jmcss.org forward slash lane, L-A-N-E, okay? The school parent and family engagement policy will be shared um, in the coming weeks and they will be uh, located in an office for you. So what is a school parent compact? The school parent compact is written, is a written commitment that outlines how the entire school community, parents, families, students, teachers will share the responsibility of improved academic achievement. The compact must describe how a school will provide high quality curriculum and instruction, how parent-teacher conferences will be held annually in elementary schools, um, how the school will provide parents with reports on their child's progress, 
how the school will provide parents reasonable access to staff, how schools will provide parents opportunities to volunteer, and how we will ensure regular two-way meaningful communication between family members and staff members. You as a Title I parent or family member have the right to be involved in the development of this compact. So the school parent compact will be given out um, in the coming weeks with the beginning of the year materials and you can find that on our website and in the school office. So what curriculum does our school use? Well, the Tennessee academic standards provide a common set of expectations for students, what they should know, and what they should be able to do at the end of each grade for each subject. So the Tennessee, uh, Tennessee's academic standards form the framework for everything taught at Isaac Lane Elementary School. For more information, you can go to the website that's posted at this school, at Isaac Lane, we use the following curriculum. For kindergarten to third grade, for math, we use Eureka Math. For kindergarten through second grade, ELA, we use CKLA. And for third grade, we use Expeditionary Learning. These are our math and uh, English language arts curriculums. What test will your child be taking? So. Um, on a good year, we would normally take the TN Ready test. We did not take it last school year because testing was suspended across the state. Now, um, you all know that Isaac Lane has been designated as a priority school. This school year will mark our third year on the list, but we have made tremendous progress. Coming out of our first year, we had a school composite score of four making us a level four. We went from a level one to a level four. So that just shows the hard work we've been doing around here and the hard work that your child has been doing um, because we, we did that um, and we did well that school year. Last year, everything was suspended, but I'm still claiming the level four status that we had from the year previous. So we're still a level four school. And this year is uncertain. They have not suspended testing, but as of right now, we are still uh, preparing and planning as if we will be taking the test. So as that information comes out, we will get that to you. So how can you be involved? How can you be more involved uh, in what we do here at Isaac Lane? We love for you to be involved, we need you. Research has proven that family engagement in education has more impact on student achievement than any other factor. So if you would like to get involved with our school improvement plan, contact me. My information is on the screen. If you wanna get involved with our parent and family engagement policy, we can tweak it for next year. You got great ideas, contact me. My information is on the screen. And if you want to get involved with our school parent compact, contact me. <laughs> yeah, get in touch with me. Reach out to me. Let me know what you're thinking. I'd love to hear from you all. Okay. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us in this meeting. I want to let you know that um, we're working hard around here to make sure that your child has everything they need. I know that we're um, all essentially virtual and cyber school students right now. Um, so I just wanna give you an update on that. If you have not picked up your child's virtual toolbox, your teacher is getting in touch with you or has been trying to get in touch with you, make sure you reach out to us so that we can get you the materials that you need in order to start instruction. We have handed out um, virtual toolboxes for each grade level. Cyber school, we've handed out um, for third grade, for second grade, for first grade, and for kindergarten. None of our cyber school students have laptops yet. So when those come in, we will call you and 
uh, give you a time to come in and get those for your students. We have given laptops to all of our third grade and second grade students who are not cyber school students. So you all will be, a be able to go ahead and start up this week. We're gonna start a class tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to logging in and seeing what's going on with your classes. For kindergarten and first grade, we did not have devices for everyone, but we have been showing you how to log in on your cell phones or your tablets. Parents, it's really simple. If you need help doing that, please come by the school. I'd be more than willing to sit down and get you uh, going on that. Or you can look in your virtual toolbox and there's step-by-step -step directions on how to download the, um, the virtual platform that we're using, Google Classroom, how you can download it on your uh, cell phone or tablet. When computers come in for kindergarten and first grade students, we will let you know. So right now, the only students that really have computers are third grade and second grade that are not cyber and some first grade classrooms that are not cyber. Everyone else, we're still waiting. So thank you for working with us. As we get information, we'll get it out to you and we're doing the best we can and we know that you are doing the best you can. And we appreciate your patience as we navigate this uncertain time um, and trying to figure out what to do and what's best for students, okay? If you need anything, parents, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me anytime by email, call and leave a message on my phone, call the front office. We're here to serve you. We appreciate you, we love you, we miss you. Kids, we can't wait to see you back in the halls of Isaac Lane. Things are the same around here. We got a lot of new faces in the building, which we will be, um, introducing them to you very soon. So again, thank you parents for joining us this evening. Thank you for your time. It's appreciated. If you need me, I'm here. Have a good one.